This video of mine is about sickle cell anemia which is one of a group of disorders known as sickle cell disease. Earlier I posted a short video about uh, sickle cell anemia in which I presented an overview about this illness. I hope you have already seen that video and today I am going to discuss this illness in, de in detail. Well, sickle cell anemia is an inherited red blood cell disorder in which there are not enough healthy red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout your body. Normally, the flexible round red blood cells move easily through blood vessels. In sickle cell anemia, the red blood cells are shaped like sickles or crescent moons. These rigid sticky cells can get stuck in small blood vessels which can slow or block blood flow and oxygen to parts of the body. There is no cure for most people with sickle cell anemia but treatments can relieve pain and help prevent complications associated with the disease. Now I will tell you the symptom. Signs and symptoms of sickle cell anemia usually appear around 5 months of age. They vary from person to person and change over time. Signs and symptoms include Anemia Sickle cells break apart easily and die, leaving you with too few red blood cells. Red blood cells usually live for about 120 days before they need to be replaced, but sickle cells usually die in 10 to 20 days, leaving a shortage of red blood cells that causes anemia. Without enough red blood cells, your body cannot get enough oxygen, causing fatigue, which is a sign of anemia. Uh, another symptom is that there are episodes of pain. Periodic episodes of pain called pain crisis are a major symptom of sickle cell anemia. Pain develops when sickle-shaped uh, red blood cells block blood flow through tiny blood vessels to your chest, abdomen, and joints. Pain can also occur in your bones. The pain varies in intensity and can last for a few hours to a few weeks. Some people have only a few pain crises a year. Others have a dozen or more pain crises a year. A severe pain crisis requires a hospital stay. Some adolescents and adults with sickle cell anemia also have chronic pain, which can result from bone and joint damage, ulcers, and other causes. Swelling of hands and feet. The swelling is caused by sickle-shaped red blood cells blocking blood flow to the hands and feet. Uh, frequent infections. Sickle cells can damage your spleen, leaving you more vulnerable to infections. Doctors commonly give infants and children with sickle cell anemia vaccinations and antibiotics to prevent potentially life-threatening infections such as pneumonia. Delayed growth or puberty. Red blood cells provide your body uh, with the oxygen and nutrients needed for, for growth. A shortage of healthy red blood cells can slow growth in infants and children and delay puberty in teenagers. Vision problems. Tiny blood vessels that supply your eyes can become plugged with sickle cells. This can damage the retina, which is the portion of the eye that processes visual images, and it can lead to vision problems. Sickle cell anemia is usually diagnosed in infancy through newborn screening programs. If you or your child develops any of the problems which I am going to tell you, you should see your doctor right away or seek emergency medical care. Well, most of the problems uh, I already told you, but let me uh, tell you uh, some symptoms uh, once again. Well, uh, if you or your child suffer from fever, uh, then you should report. Uh, I mean, people with sickle cell anemia have an increased risk of serious infection and fever can be the first sign of infection. Unexplained, unexplained episodes of severe pain, such as pain in the abdomen, chest, bones, or joints. Swelling in the hands or feet, abdominal swelling, especially if the area is tender to the touch, pale skin or nail beds, which is a sign of anemia, yellow tint to the skin or white, whites of the eye, signs or symptoms of stroke. If you notice one-sided paralysis or weakness in the face, arms or legs, confusion, trouble walking or talking, sudden vision changes or unexplained numbness or a severe headache, uh, call your local emergency number right away. Now let me tell you the causes of sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation in the gene that tells your body to make the iron-rich compound that makes blood red and enables red blood cells to carry oxygen from your lungs throughout your body. That is known as hemoglobin. In sickle cell anemia, the abnormal hemoglobin causes red blood cells to become rigid, sticky, and miss happen. Both mother and father must pass the defective form of the gene for a child to be affected. If only one parent passes the sickle cell gene to the child, that child will have the sickle cell trait. 
with one normal hemoglobin gene and one defective form of the gene people with the sickle cell trait make both normal hemoglobin and sickle cell hemoglobin their blood might contain some sickle cell but they generally do not have symptoms they are carriers of the disease however which means they can pass the gene to the, their children a uh, risk factor for a baby to be born with sickle cell anemia both parents must carry a sickle cell gene in the united states sickle cell anemia most commonly affects black people now let me tell you the complications of sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia can lead to a host of complications including stroke sickle cell sickle cells can block blood flow to an area of, of your brain signs of stroke include seizures weaknesses or numbness of your arms and legs sudden speech difficulties and loss of consciousness if your child has any of these signs and symptoms you should seek immediate medical treatment because a stroke can be fatal acute chest syndrome a lung infection or sickle cell blocking blood vessels in your lungs can cause this life threatening complication resulting in chest pain fever and difficulty in breathing it might require emergency medical treatment pulmonary hypertension people with sickle cell anemia can develop high blood pressure in their lungs this complication usually affects adults shortness of breath and fatigue are common symptoms of this condition which can be fatal organ damage sickle cells that block blood flow to organs deprive the affected or- organs of blood and oxygen in sickle cell anemia blood is also chronic chron- chronically low in oxygen this lack of oxygen rich blood can damage nerves and organs including your kidneys liver and spleen and can be fatal blindness sickle cells can block tiny blood vessels that supply your eyes over time this can damage your eye and lead to blindness L- leg ulcers sickle cell anemia can cause open sores on your legs gallstones the breakdown of red blood cells produces a substance called bilirubin a high level of bilirubin in your body can lead to gallstones another complication of sickle cell anemia is priapism in this condition men with sickle cell anemia can have painful long lasting erections sickle cell sickle cells can block the blood vessels in the penis which can lead to impotence over time pregnancy complications sickle cell anemia can increase the risk of high blood pressure and blood clots during pregnancy it can also increase the risk of miscarriage premature birth and having low birth weight babies and now let me tell you something about prevention if you carry the sickle cell trait seeing a genetic counselor before trying to conceive can help you understand your risk of having a child with sickle cell anemia they can also explain possible treatments preventive measures and reproductive options and uh, okay now i will tell you about the diagnosis a blood test can check for the defective form of hemoglobin that underlies sickle cell anemia in the united states this blood test is part of routine newborn screening but older children and adults can be tested too in adults a blood sample is drawn from a vein in the arm in young children and baby the blood sample is usually collected from from a finger or a or heel the sample is then sent to the laboratory where it is screened for the defective hemoglobin if you or your child has sickle cell anemia your doctor might suggest additional tests to check for possible complications of the disease if you or your child carries the sickle cell gene you will likely be referred to a genetic counselor uh, uh, assessing co- uh, assessing stroke risk okay using a special ultrasound machine doctors can learn which children have a high higher risk of stroke this painless test which uses sound waves to measure blood flow can be used in children as young as 2 years regular blood transfusions can decrease stroke risk uh, also you, uh, we can do test to detect sickle cell genes before birth sickle cell gene uh, sickle cell disease can be diagnosed in an unborn baby by sampling some of the fluid surrounding the baby in the mother's womb that is known as amniotic fl- fluid if you or your partner has sickle cell anemia or the sickle cell trait uh, you should ask your doctor about this screening now let me tell you about the treatment management of sickle cell anemia is usually aimed at avoiding pain episodes relieving symptoms and preventing complications treatment might include medications and blood transfusion for some children and teenagers a stem cell transplant might cure the disease now let me tell you about the medications first the first medication which is commonly used is hydroxyurea which comes with the name of droxia hydria and cyclose Daily hydro- hydroxyurea reduces the frequency of painful crises and might reduce the uh, might reduce the need for blood transfusions and hospitalization. It can also increase your risk of infection. Do not take the drug if you are pregnant. 
Another drug is L-glutamine oral powder, which comes with the name of Endari. This is FDA approved drug uh, for the treatment of sickle cell anemia. It helps in reducing the frequency of pain crisis. Then there another uh, drug is Krasinilzumab that comes with the name of Adakpio. The FDA recently approved this drug for treatment of sickle cell anemia. Given through a vein, it helps reduce the frequency of pain crisis. Side effects in, can include nausea, joint pain, back pain, and fever. Uh, we, uh, we can also give pain relieving medications. Your doctor might prescribe narcotics to help relieve pain during sickle cell pain crisis. Another uh, drug is Voxilotor that comes with the trade name of Ox, Ox Brita. The Food and Drug Administration, that is FDA, recently approved this oral drug to improve anemia in people with sickle cell disease. Side effects can include headache, nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, rash, and fever. Uh, Pre, uh, treatment to uh, prevent infections is also given. Children with sickle cell anemia might receive penicillin between the ages of about two months old until at least age five. Doing so helps prevent infections such as pneumonia, which can be life-threatening to children with sickle cell anemia. Adults who have sickle cell anemia may need to take penicillin throughout their lives if they have had pneumonia or surgery to remove the spleen. To remove the spleen, childhood vaccinations are important for preventing disease in all children. They are even more important for children with sickle cell anemia because of their infections can be severe. Your child doctor will ensure that your child receives all of the recommended childhood vaccinations as well vaccine, vaccines against pneumonia and meningitis and an annual flu shot. Vaccines are also important for adults with sickle cell anemia. There are some surgical and other procedures which I should tell you. Blood transfusions. In a red blood cell transfusion, red blood cells are removed from a supply of donated blood, then given through a vein to person with sickle cell anemia. This increases the number of normal red blood cells, which helps reduce symptoms and complications. Risks include an immune response to the donor blood, which can make it hard to find future donors. Infection and excess iron build up in your body. Because excess iron can damage your heart, liver and other organs, if you undergo regular, regular transfusion, you might need treatment to reduce iron levels. A stem cell transplant, also known as bone marrow transplant. This procedure involves reduce, replacing bone marrow affected by sickle cell anemia with healthy bone marrow from a donor. The procedure usually uses a matched donor, such as a sibling who does not have sickle cell anemia. Because of the risks associated with the bone marrow transplant, the procedure is recommended only for people, usually children, who have significant symptoms and complications of sickle cell anemia. The procedure requires a long hospital stay after the transplant. You will receive drugs to help prevent rejection of the donated stem cells, even so your body might reject the transplant, leading to life-threatening complications. So this was the treatment. Now I should tell you about some lifestyle and home remedies, which is very important to listen. Okay. Uh, taking the following uh, steps, which I'm showing, uh, which I'm going to tell you to stay healthy may help you avoid complications of sickle cell anemia. First step is you should take folic acid supplements daily and choose a healthy diet. Bone marrow needs folic acid and other vitamins to make new red blood cells. Ask your doctor about a folic acid supplement and other vitamins. Eat a variety of colorful fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains. Drink plenty of water. Dehydration can increase your risk of sickle cell crisis. Drink water throughout your day, aiming for about 8 glasses a day. Increase the amount of water you drink if you exercise or spend time in a hot, dry climate. Avoid temperature extremes. Exposure to extreme heat or cold can increase your risk of a sickle cell crisis. Exercise regularly, but do not overdo it. Talk with your doctor about how much exercise is right for you. Use over-the-counter medication with caution. Use OTC pain medication such as ibuprofen or naproxen sodium sparingly, if at all, because of the possible effect on your kidneys. You should ask your doctor before taking OTC drugs. Do not smoke. Smoking increases your risk of pain crisis. Uh, 